This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. Which brings us to the third uh, denial, facing the denial of identity. You see, Peter denied Christ by saying, ah, and just becoming part of the world. I'm just going to be part of the world. And Jesus addresses that in verses 17, verse 17 of John 21. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. This time he changed the word. Before he was using that word oyo, O-I-Y-O. This time he uses the word gnostis. And it means an, a, a knowledge that you, that you have by experience. And he said, God, you know by experience that I love you. Yeah, I've messed up, but you also know that my heart is there, God. You know, you've, you've had that experience. You know, God, that I do love you. And Jesus says to him, feed my sheep. Now, interestingly enough, Jesus also changes words here. In the first two times that he, when he asked, do you love me, he uses the word agapao or agape. We use the word agape love. And it's a holy, divine type of love. He says, Peter, do you have an agapao love for me, a holy, divine love for me? And Peter says, yeah, you know I do. You, you know, you, you know intensely that I really do, God. But this time, Jesus uses the word phileo. And phileo is a word that means it's more of a brotherly, fraternal, family type of love. In other words, Jesus was asking Peter if they had that kind of relationship. He was saying, in the first times, first two times, he asked him about agapao. Do you have that divine love for me? And Peter says, you know, I do. I, there's a connection there. But this time, Jesus says, do we have a phileo type of love? Peter, do we have a phileo type of relationship, a family type of relationship? Are we part of a family? Do we belong to each other? And Peter changes his answer. This time he says, well, Jesus, you know by experience. You, you, by gnosis, you know that I, by experience, that I have that kind of love for you. A relationship, what he's saying is, Jesus was asking Peter if they had a relationship where they identify with each other and recognize that they belong to each other. That's what he was saying. That's what Jesus was asking. Do we have the relationship where we identify with each other and know that we belong to each other? Do we have that kind of connection, Peter? Peter's response is an affirmation that he has chosen that connection with Christ. He's saying, Lord, you know that. You know everything about me. You know all there is to know, and you know that that's where my heart is. You know by experience that I have that kind of desire to have a connection with you. And this time, Jesus commissions him with, feed my sheep. Now, the response by Jesus is a powerful one. It can be interpreted as, literally, it can be interpreted as, Peter, go take my sheep to the pasture. Those are the words that he used. The, the, the words that he used, the way it's interpreted, literally could be said, take my sheep to the pasture. In other words, what he was saying is, Peter, go live out your calling. If we have that kind of a relationship, then go live out your calling. What an amazing way for us to close our study in the Gospel of John. The challenge to Peter is the same challenge to us today. Even with all that we've seen God do in our lives, all that we've seen God do in the lives of other people, we sometimes deny Christ. You do, and I do. And we sometimes fail. We sometimes fall. But God's response to us is simply, do you love me? Do you love me? I love that Jesus never once said to Peter, man, you blew it. He never once got on to Peter 
Not once. He never once chastised him. He just refocused the whole thing. Let's get back to the basics, Peter. And he's saying the same thing to you. Let's get back to the basics. Do you love me? Do you love me? In your heart of hearts, do you love me? Yeah, sometimes you don't act like it, but really, in your heart of hearts, do you love me? And in our heart, in spite of our sin and in spite of our failure, we know that we love God and that we want a right relationship with Him. You know that in your own life, even though you've blown it. You know that in your heart of hearts, you want to be right with God. I'll tell you, I know that God is so sick of hearing me say sometimes when I pray, God, you know in my heart how I am and how I feel. You know that in my heart, Lord, I I really do want this. I really do want to be right with you. And even though I blow it, you know, God, that I mean, I want to be right with you. I want to be right with you. And God knows that. And it's exactly what's happening. It's exactly what happened with Peter. It's Jesus saying, Dan, do you love me? And my response is, God, you know, you know I love you. Even though I blow it, you know that I love you. And I want a right relationship with you. And God's response is simply, yet powerfully, all right, go live out your calling. Get back to what you're supposed to be doing. Remember who you are. Put the past in the past because I'm the God of the future. Get back to your calling. Get back on focus to what it is that I have to accomplish in and through your life. Remember who you are. Who are you? 1 Peter 2.9 says this about you. You are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And some of you would say, well, yeah, but that's talking about the nation of Israel. That's not talking about me. Oh, no, it's talking about you. Read it in context. Yes, it is talking about, it's talking about the people of God. Are you one of God's people? Then this is you. You are a chosen race. God chose you before the beginning from, the Bible says before the foundations of the world, He chose you. God picked you. You are part of what God chose, what God wanted, and He chose you for this time, this place, this point in history. He chose you for this time. You are chosen for this time, now. You are a royal priesthood. That means that you have a responsibility. And what does a priest do? A priest connects people to God. That's what the priest did. The priest was a a go-between, essentially, in, in the olden days. That's what we're supposed to do. We're to be connecting people with God. How do you connect people with God at work? You just live it out. You live out your faith. And people know. They sense. They see. You are to live it out by by connecting people with God so that when people know that you have a relationship with God, they know that they can find some of that in you. They might rebel against it, but some people won't. They want to know more about it. That's why Peter says, be ready at all times to give an answer for the reason of the hope that is in you. People are going to notice, and they'll want to know, how can I connect with God? You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. Nation means that there is, there is order. There is a, a, a strategy. We are to be doing something together. We have something to accomplish. We are a people who, who have a function and we serve each other in different ways, in different roles with different responsibilities. We all have different responsibilities within the body of Christ. We are a, act to act as a nation. 
We are a people for his own possession. That means God has a purpose and a plan. You hear me say this all the time, and it is absolutely true. God is up to something in your life. If you are part of God's possession, that means he chose you. He wants you. God hasn't thrown you away. He values you as a possession, something that's really important to him. You, you. You are part of his possession. That and why? What does he want to do with that possession? That you may proclaim the excellencies of him. So what does God say to you today? Do you love me? Your answer is probably like Peter. You know I love you. And God's response is, get on with what you're supposed to be doing. Feed my sheep. Go do what you've been called to do. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class,